Yo, what up, guys? It's Saibdi here. In this video, I want to go over the news that was dropped yesterday, the What Next in Raid video that I totally missed out on. I still don't know what's in that video, so I want to watch it for the first time. I'll also be going over some fusion updates and, of course, talk about the upcoming 2x event that will be happening this Friday, Saturday. I think maybe it goes up to a Sunday also. A 3-day 2x boosted chance of getting... Um, legendaries and epics from your ancient shard legendaries and epics from your void shard and of course legendaries from your sacred shards this type of 3x or 2x boosted chance events usually happens in december like christmas new year that's when i normally see them doing a, an event like this where they boosted your chance of getting epics and legendaries from this all these shards they're all boosted where well, primary is not boosted these three shards we normally see it in december so i'm wondering why they're doing it so early in the in the um, month here not even in the month of december yet but maybe there's still gonna be another one coming up in december that like they normally do that's usually when i see them doing this type of event a two egg booster chance is the best time to get legendaries and epic from your um any of these your shots that you'll be saving up because it will boost this chance from a 0.5 percent to a one percent chance it's not the great chance you're expecting but it's the best one you ever get especially for newer players will i be going for this one i'm not sure yet i'm still trying to be on the saving side where i'm trying to keep enough voice charts to hit that 110 120 mark in case they do a void legendary event and I'm also trying to keep enough secret shots in case they do one of those guaranteed and um, legendary champion from secrets too so i'm still saving for that there's a 2x i mean there's a ancient event going on right now that gives you a guaranteed is it a guaranteed or oh, no one plus one it's a one plus one not a guaranteed so this one has this champion in here who is this? is it new tribune heraclets that's new i think i've never seen that champion in raid it looks ex the, even the avatar looks new it's a faction unity champion that's why it looks new to me <laughs> they are so hard to get they are only obtainable only during 10x events like this that coincide with this uh, one plus one event so that's the events that are coming up in raid starting this friday saturday and it go all the way to sunday let me know in the comments if you'll be pulling your shots for this 2x event 2x event or this 2x event it's happening all at the same time so anyway there's gonna be a lot of pulling shots and hope you get those legendaries off your dream so down to the main thing i wanted to record this video about i didn't want to skip out on this news and not talk about it or not give my own personal opinion about what's coming in raid so i wanted to record my um, my review of this video that they dropped because whenever they drop this what next in raid video is that going to be accepted by the community as a huge positive thing that is coming in raid or you see a huge negative feedback and backlash so i want to see what i will think about all this content of course these are all promised content it's not something that will be launching instantly in the next two three days it's something they are working on and um, yeah let's see what they have to say about it i don't know what's in this video so i wanted to see what i'll make of it let me put on my headphones It's not too loud. Return of this legendary series has long been overdue, and we're thrilled to present a new episode at last. Welcome to What's Next in Raid. We've got a new expansion to champion gear that'll add a whole new layer of customization, live arena reworks with the introduction of seasons, and some much requested quality of life updates. We're mm -hmm. talking background multi battles, super raids for the campaign, and instant hydra battles. Right off the bat, when you hear background multi battles, it seems like our prayers have finally been answered. Where you don't have to watch the multi battles as they go. <laughs> Fine, you have multi battles, you have super raids. Now this is gonna be in the background that you can start it and go do something else. When you come back, it's done. You can switch. I can start. Um, what do you call it now? Doom Tower battles, and then go to fight arena why doom tower still continues to play in the background that's what i think when i hear that i think some other games have implemented something like that but let's see if this that's what raid is promising to bring to us and finally a new challenge awaits all players but we won't spoil it just yet what they're talking about the new boss now a lot of people are quite excited about the new boss the new content but I'm like, I'm wary of it because I see it as a new challenge. It's going to be something else that I have to rebuild my champions for. It's going to be something else that the community is going to have to rack their head around. See it as a challenge and of course overcome it eventually. But just like the Hydra, just like the Clan Boss, just like the um, um, City of Centranos, Amus, it's always going to be a challenge for the free to play. We're like, oh lord, how do I beat this boss? I know a lot of people will still had issues with Scarab, this rotation 
a lot of issues with Buma. So those other bosses are still there being a challenge to players. Now you have another one to look forward to. So you might see it as a new challenge that you can overcome and you're happy about it. Why you see it as a new burden that you don't have the resources, the time, the champions, the energy to even fight. Especially if you fight the boss and you can't even reach the highest tier of the rewards available. You feel so bad about it. But eventually you get it done. So I see it that way. Just like I'm trying to get Quintus in live arena winning and losing, winning and losing. So there's a new challenge right now. Amus is no longer the end game. City of Centrinos, Soul Cross is no longer the end game for me. So I guess this will be the new thing that I look forward to. Two things I have to look forward to as an end game player in red. Why newer players might not even be concerned about this. They'll just focus on other content that they have not yet beaten. So let's see whether it's going to be received positively or we we'll see it as a new burden that we should not, you know, like ignore. Like somebody, some people still ignore it. Um, what do you call it now? Iron Twins Fortress. Um, what do you call it? Sand Devil Necropolis and Shogun. Most endgame players still don't touch any of those contents because they, even if it's not a challenge, they feel like it's not something they should farm regularly. But if it had some amazing rewards that we don't yet have in the game or that will help you progress further, then it's going to be all totally worth it. So let's see whether it's going to be worth it or it's something that we can ignore, like <laughs> the Iron Twins Fortress or the Shogun group. Watch this video to find out what it is. Now, let's get down to business. The first big feature we're showing off today is relics. These powerful new resources give you an insane amount of new customization options to suit. All right, all right, all right. Right off the bat, I see four tabs now. We know the gear. We know the um, which other one is that now? We're used to three tabs right here in your champions. Now we are seeing a fourth tab. We know the mastery tab. So that's artifacts, gear, skills. This is how the champions get their stats and do damage. We know the masteries tab um, that has some stat bonuses or some effects to their skills. And now we are having a fourth one that will be added to it. Most players will see this as pushing the goalposts. There is a lot of maths now to do to make a champion do damage. And to be honest, if they don't do content like this or add this fourth tab, it might be difficult for us to get the gear, mastery, skills to even beat the new content that is coming up. So this lets you know that this new content that is coming up is going to require a lot more than just artifacts and accessories, skills, or just masteries or blessings. Blessing is if another one that they also added without adding a tab right here where he has no blessing. But okay, there it is. But the, without adding a tab, they just sli sl slid it in there. So I feel like this is going to be a fifth tab. Even if this one doesn't feel like a tab, it is definitely a tab on its own. It's just hidden in here. So that's five things that is apply to a champion of course the area bonuses and the masteries i mean um, affinity bonuses already added some skill stats to them so this is another thing to make a champion who could normally do 30k damage now all of a sudden do 50k damage 100k damage 1 million damage maybe the next this tab they're adding will now make our champions do 5 million damage. I'm talking about in content like if I take this champion to Dragon 20 <laughs> where he normally should not be doing crazy amount of things. This tab is going to, you know, increase the stats that this champion is going to do. So that's where I see it as them pushing the gold post because if you don't boost the champion stats, you can't beat the new content that is going to be incredibly difficult. So, of course, newer players will have a long way to get to that end game which is now super, super far away from them. They can increase your champion stats and provide abilities, new benefits that are similar to passive skills. For instance, a relic may grant a champion an emergency heal whenever their HP drops below 50%. It might enhance the efficiency of their turn meter manipulation skills, or it could enable a champion to place new and unique buffs. It sounds. It sounds like masteries. It does sound like masteries, but better because you apply it to a champion. It does sounds like more of like a blessing awakening it sounds like those awakening that we already see because although the awakening are not that unique because they apply cruelty and, and phantom you know this all these ones boost meter reduce on meter it sounds like this same thing but different tab 
it depends whether the ability or the skills that is going to be happening from this new relic will be more impactful. It will feel like a new passive for the champion, like they say. So, a lot of players will enjoy this one. I don't think this anybody will see this one as a negative thing, except you're not able to get these relics. That's when you see it as a negative thing. I feel like this is going to be a very positive thing because with this, it will even help us defeat all the other endgame content that we're currently having difficulty with. I'm talking about Doom Tower, um, Emus, Socross. So whatever, any endgame content that you're currently having difficulty with, I think like this new relics will help you defeat them while they'll also be helping you beat the new content that is coming up, I guess. So whenever they put something out like this, it's probably because there's something bigger coming up that we need it for that's why but it's definitely one that um people will be saying a lot about hopefully it doesn't impact the arena in any crazy way because most arena players already set their way their teams are every they are all set the way they want it to be so changes like this kind of switch up the arena a lot more you see champions who used to do you know crazy things all of a sudden they're out of the meta new champions that were not even thought about coming to the meta because they now have ways to make them work so maybe we'll see what change that happens to the arena but i'm talking about live arena high-end live arena or even platinum arena in classic it's exciting right there's more though each relic comes with a specific number of sockets which you can put gemstones into now it's complicated i thought it's just activated like a blessing and it's done now it's now they're complicating it <laughs> i don't want to do more maths i don't want to crack my brain more strategy i mean red is all about strategy so this is taking it a step further we'll just have to wait for the pros to do it and then we'll copy what they do right that's what we <laughs> what we always do if you don't want to put in the work you check out what somebody has already built what relic he has in his champion and you copy that if you don't want to you know do it by yourself or think about it but that's going to be a lot of new thing to learn about which relics you want on which champions and yeah Whenever the wearer heals an ally with an active skill, has a 25% chance to place favor buff on them. A new buff card? That's what I'm thinking. Everything in more things are going to be added to the game that you're going to have to learn about, whether you like it or not. Else, you see it in battle and you're like, what the hell just happened? How come that champion was faster than me? How come that? This is why it's going to be happening. Gemstones offer further improvements to relics, adding passive abilities into the mix. There's a ton here. Bosses deal 5% less damage to the wearer. Nice. So you can pick and choose which one you have based on the battle you're about to fight, whether that champion is for PvP or PvE. Thumbita increasing effects at 10% more effective on the wearer. You don't want that on some bosses who um, don't like Tomita. Coming damage to a chance at hitting twice with the default skill when attacking enemies under crowd control debuffs, and so much more. Abilities from relics and passive abilities from gemstones will work together, so you can mix and match them to create bespoke champion combinations. That's how do you get them though? That's the part I'm waiting for. Is it going to be easy to get these things, or is it took us forever? Do you start with the smaller ones, or they're all going to be the same? Possibly this is where we the new dungeon comes in. We'll fight the new dungeon to get these things. Or we'll then now replace the energy and gems we already have in events and tournaments and books. <laughs> Let's see where these resources will be obtained from. That's the part I want to hear. Because if it's gonna take you like um like the new content that gives us what do you call these things now? Go here. Glyphs, that's what I'm thinking about. Like the glyphs that we got from Faction Wars. I guess this is also going to be something similar like that. But this one only works for artifacts. This one works on the champions and help them in particular battle instances. So I think it's going to be good as long as they make it um, available, sort of, and not so impossible to get. Suit your play style. We want relics to open the door for awesome new team combinations that can take on Talaria's toughest challenges. So now you know why you're going to want relics. Mm -hmm. Here's some finer details about how they work. Both relics and gemstones come in different rarities you're already familiar with. Yep. Rare, epic, legendary, and mythical. However, gemstones will come in different shapes. Circular, triangular, square, diamond, or pentagonal. 
A gemstone will only fit into a socket that is the same shape. You can't mm -hmm. force a circular gemstone into a square socket. Mm -hmm. Relics are a little bit more complex in that they have a rank and level that can be upgraded to make the relic more powerful. Good raid, bro. How do we get them? Great question. The yep. forge will be your main source of relics with crafting material. Okay, so already existing content, the forge. But then, where do we get these crafting materials from? At boss. Materials available in Live Arena, the clan shop, and other areas of the game. Each craft. They're gonna put these resources in already existing content, including live arena. Crafting material for relics belongs to a specific group and can be used to craft specific relics. Crafting relics will be different from crafting other gear, though. We wanted to keep up the customization, so we're allowing you to mix and match the crafting materials you use to craft relics. Mixing materials will affect the type and rarity of the relic you'll receive, and there's no limit to the rarity and type of materials you can combine. This is what everybody wants. I was just waiting for that. Mythical, 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 mythical. That's what you want. Nobody wants to add a rare in there or epic. I guess this is going to be the best way to get to what you want. Rarity chance is 80. So the more you put the high stuff, the more rarity chances increase. If you put lower, low level resources materials, the rarity chance decreases, I guess. And when crafting relics. Keep an eye out for a dedicated guide coming soon where we'll go into more detail about crafting relics. Moving on, we're making some tweaks to Live Arena, starting with the introduction of Seasons. They didn't say how we're gonna get them, well, okay, they did say how we're gonna get them, existing content, Live Arena. So I thought it's gonna be a part of the new boss, but no, it's from existing content. So this change doesn't really affect, doesn't shift the game that much. You just have to have a learning curve where you learn how to get and uh, use them and then improve your champion's stats already that you have and then you know, go beat content that you could not beat before because you now have relics i don't know how much stats bonuses they will add or but definitely will be useful against some pve content and will change arena for the better a rework of the gold tiers to give players a different type of challenge before you get to gold tier though we're increasing the amount of points you gain per victory in silver tier and decreasing the inactivity penalty to just one point per day. Once you hit gold tier though, that's it. You're in the big leagues and can't drop out again. As for the changes, Live Arena gold tier is becoming a seasonal league. There'll still be regular rewards like two new variable gear sets and materials to craft relics. Details are thin on the ground right now, but you can expect a more detailed update highlights video in the future when we're... I don't like the sound of that. Seasonal does not mean the points I've gathered so far I'm currently close to Quintus. I hope nothing happens to my goal to reach Quintus. I'm like 100 points away from Quintus or 120 or so. I hope that doesn't mess with my chance of getting Quintus. If it's going to be seasonal, you know how Classic Arena resets and it just takes you back to the beginning of gold, whatever rank you are. I hope this reset or seasonal reset doesn't reset my um, arena points, live arena points and just take me down back. I hope my number of points I was counting to get Quintus still stays that way. They didn't state that, but a lot of people have been making progression towards that champion because he's the end goal of that content. Forget about all the other resources we pick up along the way, all the chests we open, but that's the main goal of my live arena battles. Initially, I just wanted to get faction unity. I mean, um, yeah, the, my unity unlocked, my affinity bonuses unlocked, but then. I started getting closer to Quintus, so I hope this doesn't reset that progress in any way. We're ready to release this feature. Next up, we're talking about quality. See, they just skip through it without highlighting the part that people wanted to understand. Will it reset my Quintus progress? Give life updates, and we're prioritizing feedback from the community to deliver a few things that should help you save time in raid. The first feature we're working on is background multi -battles. multi battles. There's so much to do in raid. That background multi battles. 50 battles when you start it what happens we're giving you the option to run your multi battles in the background while raid is open you'll be freed up to sort your artifacts that's exactly how i thought it's going to be implemented start a multi battle you switch over to something else in the game why that happens we talked about instant battles just running and they felt like that wasn't a, a direction they wanted to go so this is 
I guess in a way good because right now as I do this video, I wanted to show you my tavern and all that but I did not want to run my Doom Tower because if I started these Doom Tower battles before I start this video, I will have to show you some teams in game. So I guess I could do that multi-battle thing in the background and then still go over here and talk about what else is happening in raid. Because usually I have to finish this video before I do my dailies and advanced quest. Alright, that's a good one. I think this entire video, this is the main takeaway that most players... This is even a bigger news than the new um, relic thing that they announced. I think this is going to be a, a nice one for sure. That's why everybody was talking about it yesterday. I was like, why is everybody posting videos about what's coming in in raid? Now I see why. This is huge. Test out new gear combinations on your champions and handle other account logistics. Mm -hmm. Off the back of that, we're also working on enabling super raids in the campaign. Yeah. Imagine running mm -hmm. Nightmare Stage 12-3 in the background with super raids enabled while... The key point I see about this is that it's not going to help us. We use RSL Hopper. We we'll still use. We we'll still have to use our RSL Hopper for campaign farming and leveling up champions. But if you play on mobile, this is going to be a huge advantage for you because you can simply go in there, put in some multi battles, super raids, and this background um, activities running, and just minimize the game. I guess. Hopefully, if you close the game, it doesn't stop because there's nothing worse than leaving your phone on and your phone just get heated because raid is on rare running 200 battles and keeping it plugged in too it's gonna be draining on your phone battery so this is hopefully this will allow you to just minimize the game lock your screen while that happens in the background because that's what the definition of background is supposed to be not leaving the screen on hopefully it's not one of those ones that just lets you stay on the campaign move to dungeon but you still have to leave the game on really how getting your artifacts ready for your newly upgraded champions sweet sweet synergy finally we're working hard to bring instant battles to the hydra there's not much to say yet but keep an eye on the news we'll share something as soon as we can and that's not all we've also got a rework of the market improvements to gear upgrading and auto selling and more coming soon so stay tuned and now comes the time to meet the star of today's episode. The boss. Please welcome the one and only, the Chimera. Chimera. Chimera is to Is that three heads? Three head dogs? And its den is a dangerous place for would-be heroes who go in search of treasure. First things first. This isn't anything like the Demon Lord or the Hydra clan boss fights. I was about to compare it to the Hydra. In fact, it's not like anything we've ever done before. But more on that later. Our hard-working artists and modelers spared no time or effort making this monster of mythical proportions come to life. That, but why is Red so into a monster with multiple heads? First Hydra, now this. Even if it still has one held bar, <laughs> it's still gonna be compared to the Hydra because of the multiple heads. And then I guess you have to do different things to them. I had to do four times the work too, as the Chimera has four forms it'll cycle through during the fight. There's the ultimate form. The ram form, the lion form, and the viper form. Each form comes with awesome visuals. And it's so basically four heads. <laughs> so basically four heads then. You're not just fighting one battle because one boss because that would be too easy. Players in the community will easily come out with teams that can nook the boss down really, really fast. But when they make it four different heads who you have to do different things to, it makes it more difficult for you to come up with a team that can always take it down um, easily. So I guess that's why they always have to add that variable of not just one boss doing one thing. It's now four bosses in one doing different things all together and different ways to deal with them. Its own set of unique skills which will require a special approach to handle. Here's how it works. The fight always begins with the Chimera in its ultimate form and it will change forms every five turns on a preset rotation. You'll know exactly what's coming and when so you can prepare accordingly. We also didn't want this fight to drag out. So after 65 boss turns, the Chimera will escape, ending the fight. So basically, they don't want you to build um, unkillable teams that go on forever and do crazy amount of damage. So they are starting off this boss with that turn count limit. So we don't spend 1,500 max turn count in that content. And so at the end of 65 turns, whatever damage you see there, that's what you work out with. 
making it going to be one of the most difficult content to and hopefully the reward we get hopefully it is not based on the damage we do or is it going to be a clan activity where we all, we all do a particular amount of damage just like the clan boss and hydra yes i think this is going to be a clan activity where if your clan mates can do big numbers and you do small numbers hopefully you all get the rewards based on tier i guess let's see what they have to talk about the rewards because it's not about the boss battle will the rewards be worth it fight what makes this fight really stand out against the other clan boss fights are the trials each of the chimera's forms except the ultimate form has nine unique trials that can be completed broken down into three difficulties easy normal and hard You'll have to do different things to complete them, like placing a certain number of debuffs on the Chimera within a set number of turns, or dealing a set amount of damage using only poison and HP burn debuffs. There's 27 trials in total, and progress will not carry over between battles. You'll need to complete them in each fight. Beware though, the more trials you complete, the stronger the Chimera's ultimate form becomes. So basically telling you to do this during the battle, do this during the battle, just like the... Um, some dungeons require you to beat the content with poison or place a heal reduction. So they basically, they want you to do some of these things and it will give you some bonus stats, I guess, for fighting these battles or for achieving those goals. Not just coming in here and do whatever you want. They want you to play by the rules. It'll start ignoring damage reducing buffs and your champion's defenses. So be careful. If you can complete the trials and fend off the ultimate form's enhanced attacks, you'll net yourself some awesome extra rewards. You'll get special crafting materials that are needed to make hot. So that's the main way we get this. I thought they said these materials was going to be obtainable from Live Arena. Um, they said that we're going to get them from other content. So this main way for, for you to get these new crafting materials is going to be from this boss. I knew it was going to be from this boss. Because they said it, was I wrong? They said it that you're gonna be getting these materials from. The other content that we already have. Maybe just a few. But the main source is gonna be from here. Because that's a lot for normal stage. High rarity relics from the Chimera group. As well as gemstones and other goodies. That's on top of all the other rewards you'll get just for fighting the Chimera. Same as other clan boss fights, you'll get personal reward chests for dealing enough damage to the Chimera, which yep. will be doubled if your clan gets it to zero HP. We're also introducing the Chimera Clash to this new clan boss, which will work the same as the Hydra Clash. Oh, and there's also fragments for a brand new mythical champion up for grabs. As a another goal, another thing to push for. We've not yet picked up the fragments for all the champions we are still working on that they put out for us. Maud is there, Quintus is there, Lamasu is there. Now you have another one to walk towards. <laughs> As always, keep your eyes peeled for a dedicated. But the good thing is, once you're done with fragments for that champion, you feel less need to fight that content except you really want the other resources that is dropped from that content video guide coming where we'll go into greater detail about the mechanics of this monstrous new challenge now it wouldn't be a proper what's next in raid video if we didn't show off some of the incredible looking champions our artists have been working on the holiday season is coming and we're bringing sir nicholas's companion lady noel into the fold don't get on her bad side though that if Sir Nicholas has not been accepted by the community, will she be accepted? Will they now work together? Will his skills change? Because if they don't change his skills or make him better, I don't think they will pair well together. Except she will only have the things that say, if Sir Nick is in the team, she can do this. Hope she's not stronger than he is because he's been here longer. Definitely, they should revamp his, his um, build to make him more in line with her so they can work perfectly together like most pairs work kindly grandmother exterior only holds true if you've been nice all year bells the reckoner will drop by the holiday celebrations as well but be sure to watch your presence closely when Teleria's own version of krampus is around there are more champions to join them and we have no doubt they will find a suitable place on your rosters Whew, man that was a lot to cover thanks for joining us and we hope you're excited about these changes and updates coming to raid in the near future 
don't forget to like the video hit subscribe it's a big challenge that is coming in raid i'm a little bit intimidated by it and like as usual we have to depend on the community the smart brains of the community to put together teams for us free to play teams beginner teams that can help us take down this new content and begin to use the forge to forge those um, um news things we can add to our artifacts and our champions and beat content for the better again this is optional content that is coming up don't think that this is something you have to do every day of course if you're in a clan you guys have to strategize on how to make it work for everybody but definitely it's not going to be one of those things that you must do there are clans who don't even do hydra they just stay in normal hydra for years there are clans who've been in brutal clan boss for so definitely this is going to be an optional content the resources you will not be getting for not doing that content is not going to be game changing and of course for end game players who are trying to get to the level the next level this is going to be the next level for you and looking for a new challenge they put out a new challenge for you guys and hoping to see what teams can come up we, they didn't say when this content will be released so i'm looking forward to that when it's released i'll look forward to the big brains of the community to put together teams that we already have champions we have and make it free to play friendly as usual so we can go in there and beat it and get some rewards even if we don't do it at the highest level like some players still cannot do um dungeons at the highest level of hard 10 or something so definitely it's fine to do content like this at the low level and get what you want from it and yeah beat some other content but it doesn't have to be the highest stats that you can get from it so don't be intimidated by it it will always be an easier level where you can just fight a few battles and get what you want just like some players normally farm stage seven of this uh, <laughs> of this sand devil necropolis so i am intimidated by it but i'm looking forward to what and the community will come up with when it eventually launches in game so that's what i think about this new content that is coming in game the new boss and of course how we're gonna spend the resources how it's gonna change our champions for the better with a fourth tab to boost our stats even higher to beat more content or a bit older content that we are still having difficulty with i see it as a plus i see it as a good thing but i see it also as optional thing you don't have to be mad at it if it affects your arena teams i'm sorry if you don't fight that boss then other players who fought that boss is getting some huge stat advantage over you in the arena then you have to catch up with that so that's gonna be a little bit annoying for most players who don't want to go farm a new boss to change all their champion builds to now begin to compete in the content that you they used to you know get power in all right i'll end this video with my author or so someone's because it's still ongoing and i've not finished my points requirement for that content um, it's still ongoing the awakening boost event is still on and i just wanted a few more points to complete um let's see did i get a five star rare champion and the fusion update i'll give a little bit of fusion update also at the end and to make sure you're still catching up with the fusion because this is what day three and there are a bunch of new events that are coming up especially the spider that is starting today and of course the artifact announcement that you should probably be doing right now I just wanted to see if the red dot is glowing right now it is so i wanted to pick up that um primal shard i think that was my entire goal of summoning my that's it that's the goal that's what i wanted but i will still go over there make some space and summon the rest of this one i will not summon my immortal anymore i've reached the points requirement i need but i'll summon these small boys and call it a day so what else is happening in raid if i go over to my event calendar for this fragment fusion stock the broken Today is going to be a Thursday, and as you can see, if I draw my line right here, the spider is what is kicking off today. By now, you should be done with your fire knight because it has ended. You should be halfway into your dungeon divers because you use champion training and fire knight to get it done. And then the spider will help us complete the rest of these dungeon divers um, along the way right here using the spider. So I've not started farming the spider. I will go over there, do some artifact enhancement because that needs to be done today because i need to cleanse some of this trash gear we found from the fire knight and build some champions to give me some artifact enhancement point i'm building my lady mikage today um, that i summoned recently and yeah she's still farming masteries but i'll build that today live on stream twitch.tv for like bris5d to get me some artifact enhancement point while i do some gear cleanses so um artifact, classic arena is starting tomorrow so save some classic arena tokens for that don't spend all of them today especially the ones that 
will not expire today. Then Champion Chase is going to be coinciding with this event they announced. I wanted to see if it will, but it does. So the event they announced about the upcoming 2x boosted chance of getting epics and legendaries from Ancient Shard, Void Shards and Sacred Shards will coincide with Champion Chase. Take note, for those who have farmed these Prism Crystals, don't need to summon your Prism Crystals today. If you go back to, to the summoning pool event, it still, it still has one day, 21 hours. Is it going to be enough for the Champion Chase? Has it already launched? Champion Chase has not launched. One day, 24 hours. 21 hours. I wanted to see if that Prism Crystal can be saved for this Champion Chase. Okay, there you go. It does coincide with this. This is 19 hours. The other one is 1 day 21, 21 hours. So that means we can wait, hold on to your summoning pool until this Champion Chase starts. That's when you go over there and summon these Prism Crystals. So you see I have 45 right here just to give me some Champion Chase points. Because I don't expect, I don't intend to go for that 2x void, 2x ancient, 2x. I don't, I'm not going for it because I'm saving my shards, right? But just because it coincides with the champion chase, I will have to look for a way to get champion chase done without summoning too many shards. And one of the ways to get champion chase done is by doing primal uh, my summoning portal pools and two remnant summons. I will also be pulling this so. Champion Chase is, we look for any way to get points during it, including doing old fusions or fusing old fragments. I'll see if I can do this Champion Chase without some money shots. That's what I'm trying to say because I really don't want to go for this 2x event. Because I'm endgame player, I need to save for guaranteed events, not for 2x events. But hey, you guys will definitely go for it. If I was playing a noob to pro series, this might be an awesome time to pull shots, but I'm not. My endgame account is saving for guaranteed events while I use my summoning pool i still have this one saved up i looked at the summoning pool champions i felt like they are not that crazy in terms of whether i should go for them or not so my champion training i've not picked it up i'm talking about the remnants uh, mid the uh, prism crystals i got from here i've not picked it up if you leave it right like this until that summoning pool event ends it will not get someone it will be sent to your inbox for you so i'm thinking of saving this one for the next because the champions on that um, summoning pool is not that game changing. I mean, he's probably great, but it's not like my most wanted champion right now in raids. So I wanted to save that 45 for the next one. I could have saved this one, but I already summoned it. I mean, I already claimed it from the Sand Devil Necropolis. So that's a little tip for you guys going for the fusion. We want to wait for that one until champion chase even if you're not going for the fusion you still want to wait until your champ champion chase starts up before summoning your um this is your prism crystals all right i think that's all that is happening in raid i just wanted to go over the news that i missed out yesterday and then catch up with everything that is happening today in the game and i think i'm all caught up i'll go over there and do my artifact announcement and i'll call it a day so far fragments that i've gotten for this ongoing fusion is 10 so 10 stock fragments is what I currently have. You can, can see right there. So 10 is where you should be. If you've finished your Dungeon Divers and um, Classic Arena, it will give you 20, 10 more. And of course, the spider is starting off soon. So I'm waiting for the spider. I think the spider has already kicked off and I'm going to be farming that after I do my gear cleanse. All right, that's all. Like, subscribe for more daily raid content. I'll see you guys in the next one. Tell me in the comments what you make about all this new new um, news that is coming up in raid with what's next in raid that they announced what are you most excited about is it the new boss the new gear mechanic or the boost it will have to your champions and all the um, other quality of life improvements that they are talking about later guys